Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Greetings from Los Angeles. I am overseas at the moment for work, and I am currently recording in between a few couch cushions that I have picked up from the hotel room I'm in and a pillow over the top, and I thought... What better time to talk about how to record decent audio at home? I've been emailed a number of times from people starting out asking how to get decent audio quality and whether they need to hire a voiceover booth to do that. The truth is you absolutely do not and it is an expense that you will not be able to justify if you are just starting out. Understandably, voiceover booths can be really expensive to rent and why would you bother renting one when you can just make one at home? It will not be pretty and you will not leave it up to show other people, but it will do the job. As I said, I am literally broadcasting to you from in between two couch cushions, and this is exactly what I do at home as well. I have a very echoey office with a lot of windows and high ceilings, and it is a nightmare to record audio in. The problem with an echoey space is that it becomes quite difficult to edit. So you'll notice if you record something and then you sit down to edit, that each of the words have almost a little tail on them where the sound is still bouncing around the room. So you can't really get a clean cut if you want to edit. So it's important to remove as much of that out of the record as possible if you want more control over the audio when you actually sit down to do something with it, an audition or whatever program you use. On the show notes page that you can find at podschoolpodcast.com, I will put a link to an article I wrote about making a voiceover booth for under $50, which was literally a cardboard box, some mattress foam and and a bit of adhesive spray, uh, and I managed to create a voiceover booth uh, using just those things. If you don't want to go to that much trouble, then just do what I do and put two couch cushions in a triangle around your microphone, another one on top, and voila, you have a voiceover booth. Not a very pretty one, but one that works. Essentially, all you're trying to do is take your recording space from a big echoey room covered in hard surfaces to a smaller space where the sound can be absorbed into some something soft. And sometimes all you need to do to achieve that is just to close the curtains. You might not need to actually create a tiny little space. You could have a decent enough sounding room, but just make sure that the windows are covered up and that kind of stuff. Really, it's a bit of trial and error. It's really important to record your audio in the space that you intend to record and see if it sounds like you're recording on a toilet. And if it does, just put some blankets around or anything else that's soft that you can find that can kind of cover up any of the hard surface around where you're recording. The great thing about audio is nobody can see you, so it doesn't have to look pretty. And the number of podcasters that you would listen to and think, gee, their show sounds good, that are probably broadcasting from a closet surrounded by their clothes on hangers or somewhere equally as non-glamorous is pretty large. It's easy to think when you're starting out, oh gosh, I could never do this because I don't have the proper space, I don't have a voiceover booth, but very few people do. It's just about taking taking what you've got and making the best of that in the situation. You don't need a brand new space. You can work in the area that is most comfortable to you and just try and make the best of that space with literally what you have around the house. Have a go at home. Use your cushions, your blankets, whatever you can find. Just cover up any of those hard reflective surfaces and avoid things like recording in the kitchen or any of those sort of larger spaces where you have tiles on the floor or mirrors and windows around. Uh, As I said, it's going to be a bit of trial and error, but just record some stuff and see the difference. And you'll realize that actually that just putting a few cushions around will give you exactly the kind of sound that you you need. I hope that's helped you think about how to record at home so that it sounds professional by the time it gets to your dear listener. As always, you can head to podschoolpodcast.com to get all of the notes and a link to that uh, article where I will show you the pictures of my delightful $50 voice over booth. You can head to podschool.com.au if you need a little bit more assistance, something more step-by-step. That is my online podcasting course that takes you all the way from coming up with an idea to monetizing your show. I'll see you next week. And until then, happy podcasting. That's all for today. 